Hi, I'm Sam Barsky. Today I'm going to show you some progress on my Dead Sea sweater. So, this is what I've done so far besides the ribbing on the other side. As you see, it has a couple of palm trees on it since there are some palm trees alongside the Dead Sea and that would make some nice scenery. Normally in the past, I've used some other yarn for palm trees that has like an interesting texture when I, I've done other sweaters with palm trees, but I was unable to get any of that this time, so I just used the same yarn as I'm using for the rest of it, which is Barocco Remix. So at the point at which I'm at now, I've done about 70 rows on here, and this is the blue, and the blue that represents the Dead Sea, I'm closing in on this little area here, and then it'll be solid color most of the rest of the way up. Someone just said hi to me. Hi. So anyway, I'll start off by knitting a couple of rows for you. It's just stockinette stitch, knit and purl. And there are going to be some color changes. And I'll show you the pushing and pulling method, which I use when I'm doing a curved line that's not like a perfect curve in a situation like this, which is very common in nature scenes. This is the way I do them a lot. As you can see, I did it here, like on the bottom row. When I, as I change between different shades of tan here and here, it's like diagonal stripes. So, what I'm going to do is when I get to, as far as this blue goes in this row, Someone just asked how I am, and then I said, I, well, I'm fine. So, I have about four more stitches here on this section of blue, and here I, I'm at the tan section. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tan yarn here. Instead of knitting with this, I'm going to cross it on top of the blue yarn here. The blue goes under, and I'm going to knit two stitches. But after I do the first, I'm going to pull the tan one as tight as possible. So that there won't be a hole. And then I'll do the second stitch in blue. That's a push. When you move the yarn here over, from here, you do over more rows. And it's hard to do a push of more than, than two stitches. It gets complicated when you do. Sometimes you have to, but it's easier not to. Pulls, you can allow for more stitches in them. Because I'm, I'm going to do a pull up next. As I'm going to bring some more blue yarn into it. And a pull you can pretty much safely do as many as four or five stitches in them. But it's preferable to do fewer stitches in the pushes when you have flexibility like this. So I'm going to stop exactly four stitches shy of where it turns into blue again. So what I'm going to do is like normally when you change colors you cross over. So I'm going to take the blue yarn from here, the feeder yarn. It's a different skein of blue than what I'm using over here. And then I'm going to just cross it under the tan. And then I'm going to knit the, these four stitches and all the subsequent stitches in this row in blue. So that completes the pull. Like, theoretically, you can do a lot more stitches in the pull and you don't have to put a finger under or anything. But you don't want to carry across too much, so in that sense, you want to limit the pulls to four or five stitches at the most, unless you really have to. If, if you have to pull or push any more stitches, it's worth just cutting the yarn and then starting over where you're planning to use it in the next row. But that's not the case here. This gets the desired curvature of the line which is common in natural scenery. So, now I'll do a pearl row for you to show you what that's like. So what I'm going to do is, this row will have a push, so I'm going to do the pearl stitches as far as this blue goes, and then I'll show you a pearl push and a pearl pull. So you're looking at the yarn, the front of the sweater, the outside facing you now. So 
So I'm working my way toward the end of this row. And then I have uh, about maybe eight more stitches and then I'll do uh, the push. So there, it's pretty much the same kinds of techniques, just reverse. So what you want to do when you do a, a push on the pearl side, the tang yarn goes over the blue like that. So the blue goes under. You purl the first stitch, and then likewise, you want to pull this first, the tan yarn after doing the first stitch as tight as you can go, and then you do the second purl stitch, and then as this tan area shrinks, what I'm going to do is I'll purl this until I get four stitches shy of the other blue over here. So a little more. Here, here's the four stitches that I'm talking about. And then I'm going to take the blue underneath of the, the tan over here. And then I'm going to start purling with the blue. And I'm going to purl with it till the end of this row. I'm actually almost done with this tan section. Once I get to the blue, it's going to be blue for quite a while until I get to the, the yarn I'm using for the sky, which is kind of like a, a, a shade of yellow that looks like the sun is shining on the sky. It's hard to describe, but that's what I'm going to use for the sky of this. It was the best possible color. I have three skeins of it, which is plenty of enough. So here we go. Someone just told me she wanted to watch and I'm glad I'm able to, to do that, to give someone this opportunity. Someone just told me the screen is frozen, uh-oh. So I'm going to end the video now so I can look into this technical issue. But thank you everyone for all your time. I'm going to see what was going on. Bye everyone.